All right. So welcome everybody to the Anxiety Relief Workshop. This is a workshop that I decided to really throw together in the last minute because I know that a lot of people might need this, might want this right now. And um, again, it's not, um, there's no PowerPoint, there's nothing fancy here, but I am definitely gonna give you some tools and techniques that you can implement immediately when um, you know you start to feel anxious or, or, or thoughts spiral out of control. So a little, um, a little pre-frame, if I may, um, we're going to talk about what is anxiety very briefly, because the thing is, if you already experience anxiety, you probably know exactly what it is, right? Um, why it's important for us to work on overcoming anxiety, or at least able to dial it down. Okay, so we're going to cover that, how to dial it down specifically, what to do specifically, and when to do that. So as you can see, there is a strategy to what I'm going to be sharing with you today. And um, I'm also going to be um, giving you the ability to ask me any questions you have at the end. So that's why it's probably best if everybody mutes right now, because um you know, I'm definitely going to answer every one of your questions. I'm planning to run this workshop till 1 p.m. so that we have enough time. If you have questions and if you want to chat, and I may be able to look at that later, at the bottom of the screen, you will notice that there is, again, this is just for people who are not familiar using Zoom, you will notice that there is, especially if you like wiggle over a little bit, you'll notice there's a chat. It, there's a little box, a little window that says chat. You can click on that and just start typing in because you might have a question in the moment and just jot it down so that later on we can review it okay so any questions you have anytime it's not distracting at all just feel free to type in into into the chat box what else um, yeah so what is anxiety basically anxiety is when our body goes into a fight flight or freeze mode right and what that means is that a lot of things are happening in our body and in our mind that cause this anxiety reaction. And so what happens is I'm actually going to share my screen because I just want to give you a little, um, again, remember, this is just completely primitive and not exactly, you know, no PowerPoint, but just to make a point. So when you are in, can you see my cursor? Yep, good. So when you are doing, and I say that on purpose, when you're doing anxiety, and I'm going to come back to that later, you are in sympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system gets activated. That means um, your pupils dilate. Uh, it inhibits sal salvation, sal salivation, which means your mouth might get dry. Um, you, your, your relaxed bronchi increases your heart rate. Um, in inhibits digestive activity, stimulates glucose release by the liver, stimulates epinephrine and norepinephrine, which is really uh, just your, not just, but it's adrenaline, uh, relaxes your bladder and orgasm could happen ejaculation. Now, this is really interesting. I'm going to come back to this at the end. Basically, what happens in a nutshell is that your system gets extremely text. So your system is in overdrive. Basically, your system is your body, your mind is like, oh, we have to protect ourselves. We have to do everything. So everything is turned on. It's like you switch something and boom, you're turned on. So now you have the ability to fight, flight, freeze, or whatever you do to protect yourself and to survive. The good news about this is that this is healthy, this is good, this is wonderful. This is very, very useful in the moment. So I wanna, I wanna really highlight this because that means there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken, you're healthy. This is a good thing. So at first, you wanna appreciate this, that, oh my God, my body works perfectly well, perfectly healthy, thank you. The, the problem is, because everything is turned on, you now, um, the problem is when this turns chronic, when you spend most of your day in this state, that's the problem. 
okay? Because that is when you are literally closing your door to universal intelligence. What I mean by that specifically is when you're in this state, you're not able to focus. And times have changed. So I, I used to say there is the before, the before coronavirus anxiety, and now we're, we're dealing with the after coronavirus anxiety. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much stress. There's so much people don't know how to deal with this. So the anxiety is rising so that this, again, this system might be even more uh, turned on than usual. And so we, when this is on, we're not able to be calm. When you are calm, you're able to focus, you're able to make decisions easily, you are able to um, think creatively, and you're able to come up with solutions. Hi, Jesse, welcome. If you could please mute yourself, <laughs> that would be great. This is where we don't have uh, back, back um, uh, what do you call it? Um, we don't have noise coming in. So, you know, peace and wisdom is basically inhibited when you're in this sympathetic nervous system. Your body is contracting. All the blood, all the resources are going to your, and this is why your digestive system, your, your, everything goes into the core of your body, okay, which is great when you need to fight, flight, or freeze, when you absolutely need to protect your life. But in order for us to be resourceful, calm, peaceful, we must be able to push oxygen into our brain, into our fingertips, and into our toes, okay? So I just want to be really uh, clear about we don't want to stay here. So number one, it's healthy, it's good, it's great, it's natural, but we want to do everything. Once the threat is and remember, this is a perceived threat for a lot of times, because the truth is we're not being chased by a tiger. And hopefully our child is not stuck under the truck. If it were, we would have absolutely the ability to lift, lift that truck off, off, the, uh, you know, off the ground, because at that moment, we're so strong, we're so pumped with adrenaline, all right? But so much of the, today's stress is perceived stress. We, we really aren't dying and we're not actually thre uh, threatened, if that makes any sense. We are, but it's perceived threat. So we want to do everything to get into the parasympathetic nervous system. And so anxiety is where your body contracts, constricts, everything tightens. The parasympathetic nervous system allows you to expand and everything opens up. You're able to breathe. You're able to relax. You're able to think. You're able to come up with solutions and you're able to, to be peaceful in yourself. So today, I also want to be clear about this workshop. I am used to working with people and I didn't even in, in introduce myself, but chances are if you're on my email list, you know who I am. Basically, I help people completely overcome anxiety, depression, and everything else. What we're doing today, what I'm doing today is sharing with you coping mechanisms so that you can teach yourself in the moment, immediately when you feel that threat on how to get into the parasympathetic nervous system, okay? So that you can have tools and techniques ready at your fingertips that you can use. And the truth is, I usually don't teach this to my clients because they don't need it. Because by the time I finish working with my clients in three or four weeks, anxiety is done. They never, ever have to apply these techniques ever again because they know how to control their mind and body so that they don't ever have to experience anxiety. But in an immediate threat for today, I'm giving you tons of tools and techniques that you can apply consistently. And the more you apply them, the better they're going to work. So this... Um, being in the parasympathetic nervous system basically allows you to, instead of working with adrenaline, right? Adrenaline is here, extremely tasking. It drains your energy. It, um, it, it, it inhibits the ability to focus, you know, very, very energy draining here, in the parasympathetic nervous system, as soon as you're able to tap into that, you are producing the DHEA hormone, which is your vitality hormone, which actually eats cortisol and adrenaline like Pac-Man. 
So that's a good thing, all right? So you wanna train yourself to get into this para parasympathetic nervous system as quickly as you can. When you are here, you're able to conserve energy. This is where all your healing takes place so that you can rebuild yourself and rejuvenate yourself and refresh yourself and, and go back to feeling calm. And um, so this is really where um, you're able to go back to protection mode. How are we doing so far? Everybody good? Okay, awesome. Uh, and remember, use your chat box if you want to um, ask me questions, especially if they come up in the moment so that you don't forget about asking me later, okay? Um, now, anxiety. Actually, many of you may think that you have anxiety and that you were born with it and this is just how you are and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that is wrong. You do anxiety. And that's really good news. I like that somebody's drinking water. Good thing. And I'm going to get to that. Um, you do anxiety. The good news is about, about that is that you can also undo anxiety once you realize that you do it. Basically, and I, I don't say this to be disrespectful, I say this because this is backed up by science. Basically, it's just a bad habit. I know this sounds very harsh and very like throw it in your face, but that really is what it is. So once again, this is really good news because just like any habit, once you train a habit, it gets better and better and better, especially if it's one that you want to have. So anxiety is, is like no other, like, like any other habit. If once you train yourself to undo the anxiety and to, and to not make anxiety, then you're working on a habit that is gonna be more useful for you. So again, the key is to not allow yourself to stay in anxiety. This is really, really important. The other thing that is, is such a misconception, a lot of people think that they have to take medication to help them overcome anxiety. Actually, studies and studies, and, and I have tons of doctors, doctor friends, nurse friends. I have people who work in the pharma industry, and I've done my research. Here's the truth, and forgive me, this is harsh, and this, but this is the reality, and I want you to know this. Please don't believe a word I say. Do your own research, okay? Studies have proven that, in fact, if you take anxiety, medication, antidepressants for more than six months, that will lead to permanent brain damage. I know this is hard to hear, but when you are an educated consumer, then you can do something about this. So clearly, anxiety meds do not work. They, they maybe at best put a Band-Aid on so that you might feel better. And the other, the other thing is that for a lot of people, when they are on these medications, they lose touch with their emotions which is not good because that also means they can't love as deeply as they want. They can't feel as deeply as they want. So it's basically you turn into a zombie, which is not a, a beautiful human experience. And this is once again, I want to I wanna tell you that the anxiety is a good thing. The fear is a good thing. We want to consciously decide, no, this is not what I want to experience right now. There's a better way. And that's what I'm going to teach you today. So anxiety meds please, if you can, and, and I'm, by the way, not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I am not the one to put you on or take you off these medications. That is a relationship that you want to, um, you know, take on with your doctor or whoever puts you on, on the meds. It's your decision if you want to be on or off these meds. Number two, a lot of people have tried, tried therapy for anxiety and depression. Well, the problem with that concept, in my opinion, is I've never met a therapist who said, you're going to be working with me for six years or two months or six months, and you're going to be done. You're going to be free of anxiety. So that's the problem, number one. Number two is that um, many times, and I've been to therapy years ago, 
the therapist and you will talk about the problem and the problem and the problem. And then you go home with the same problem and then you come back the next week with the problem. And in fact, a lot of this stuff can lead to more PTSD. It can lead to more anxiety because you're constantly focusing on the problem. And obviously, like I said to you today, today I'm gonna to give you lots of coping mechanisms, basically band-aids that you can implement immediately. If you want to completely overcome anxiety, you can, you can do that. That can be done, but not today and not in five minutes, right? So, so just wanna be clear what's available to you and what, you, what your potential is. The question is, do you want to? really overcome anxiety completely so that you can be free of it and live in peace and calm. So that can also be done. Now, the, um, when I say you do anxiety, I want you to imagine, and I say this lovingly and respectfully, okay? I want you to imagine that there is a part of you that basically acts like a wild animal. Like, it, like a wild horse or a dog that hasn't been trained yet. And every time the anxiety comes in, imagine that this part of you, this wild horse or this dog who hasn't been trained shows up and just goes berserk, does whatever he wants and, and just like goes crazy. And, and so basically, would you mind putting your uh, phone on mute, please? I'm not sure who that is. It's an iPhone. Thank you. Yes. Perfect. So here's the good news. Basically, what we want to do as soon as we notice these emotions, these feelings, these thoughts coming up is we want what's called an NLP. It's a pattern interrupt like that, right? That startled you. So there are so many ways that you have the ability to startle your own system, your own mind and body. And mind and body work together always. So that's what these techniques are meant to do. They are able to interrupt this pattern of anxiety. Anxiety is nothing but a reaction, a response that your mind, it goes from the mind to the body. And here's, now listen, I have this amazing artwork. I don't want you to gush over it, so please don't get distracted by my amazing artwork, okay? <laughs> so. Basically, what happens is we're going to go from here down. Basically, with anxiety, you have a thought. Everything starts with a thought. For example, oh my God, oh my God, what if I get sick? What, what if I run out of money? What if I lose my job? What, right? A thought. That thought creates a feeling in your body, and boom, now you have anxiety. It's that quick. Do you see that? It happens that quickly. And now how do you feel if you say to yourself, oh my God, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to run out of money. I'm going to, it's not going to feel good, right? And then because of how you feel, eventually you're going to take action. And now this action, so imagine if you are thinking that you're going to lose your job, taking action, do you think you're going to have more confidence or less confidence? Do you think that you're going to feel more calm or less calm? with this thought that entered your mind chances are you're going to feel less confident and you're going to feel less calm so we want to interrupt the thought that comes in does that make sense so far and the thought that ultimately when i point to my head i mean the thought into the feeling okay so that gives us the ability to respond. And that's where the word responsibility comes from. The ability to respond. And the way you can respond is to starting today, starting right now. And this is a muscle that I want you to train. And, and again, remember the habit, we're installing new habits now. So the first thing you want to become aware of consciously is what are you thinking? What are you thinking all day long? And I know this is a tall order, but even if you become aware of your thoughts as they come into your mind, just say, wait a minute, what am I thinking right now? And immediately ask yourself, 
if I believe that I'm going to lose my job, and I firmly believe that, is that going to give me more peace, more calm, more confidence, or less? And then change your mind, obviously, right? This is not useful. Change your mind to, is this true? Do I want to believe this? Is that the only solution? And these are just these are just some ways that you can change your mind, right? But as soon as you focus to what you don't want, you have the ability to also change your feelings. Does that make sense? Okay. Remember to, to type in into your into your chat, um, in, into the chat box any questions you have. So let's see where are we at so the key is is really to start training yourself now to develop different uh rituals different ways of dealing with yourself of coping with how you think and how you feel and before we go further i also want you to give yourself um become aware of big picture right now what's really going on and realize that what's happening right now in the world clearly could lead to more stress and more feelings of uncertainty and we're dealing with a lot so just from that perspective give yourself compassion Give yourself love, give yourself kindness, give yourself like, wow, this is a lot to deal with, you know, and, and just be good to yourself and realize that, wow, you know, and even let's, let's just um, understand as we're watching TV and these politicians and doctors and nurses and all these people in leader, leader positions right now, the truth is, None of this has ever happened ever in, in the history of humanity at, at, at this rate. So everybody's really doing the best they can with what they have. And so many of these leaders may be stressed out and they may be like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. So we're all in the same boat. So we want to really be compassionate with one, one another and be like, okay, what can we today to get through just today? And just, again, take some breaths and realize that this is a lot. This is a little different than our usual anxiety so now is the time to train ourselves to not allow this experience or this circumstance to define us now more than ever we want to put all muscles into action everything we can so that we can overcome this and break through any challenge we're faced with daily Okay, so this is really a great opportunity for you to become stronger and for you to become more powerful and for you to be, become more resourceful and for you to become more creative. And the only place you can do that from is the opposite of anxiety, not from the sympathetic nervous system, but into the parasympathetic nervous system. So if you can implement any of these tools, even to the smallest degree, you have won. Okay, you, that's enough. Give yourself the, okay, I'm going to practice whatever I can, when I can. And at times when you feel completely defeated, allow yourself to feel the fear. Allow yourself to be human. Allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself to be angry. It's okay. But don't stay there. Okay, don't stay there. It's no different than when you get, I've never been in a boxing match, but I've watched some in, live in person. It's no different than, listen, we're alive. We're in this boxing match. Like it or not, we're all part of getting knocked around daily. It is our choice to stay down and to stay, oh my God, I, I can't take it anymore. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can take it. And you can choose responsibility okay because ultimately staying and again i know this this is hard to hear but ultimately if we decide to hold on to anxiety and to feel helpless and to feel hopeless this the sympathetic nervous system 
leads to dis-ease. Okay? Obviously, because this is where healing takes place. So everything is the exact opposite, right? So if, and disease is not something we can afford right now. Anxiety depletes our heart, our lungs, our energy system, our nerve. It's, it's just like completely de depleting and draining. And this is just in a big nutshell. So we want to do everything to allow the body to go back to healing, to go back to peace, and to go back to calm. And everybody can do that. You don't need any special tools. You don't, you, you don't need any special abilities. We can all learn how to do that. But we have never been taught this, not in school. Our parents don't know how to do this. So we're going to dive into this now. Um, so basically, big picture, when you stay in anxiety, your focus is compromised. And now more than ever, we need to know how to make decisions quickly and, and, and powerfully. Our energy is compromised. We need to keep our health sharp right now and our Im immune system right? So those are the three things that are being threatened if we stay with anxiety. Now, um, basically, I'm going to go from big picture down into the details, all right? There are three things. If you do any of these three things, if you change any of these three, that is your first step to change anxiety. Your breathing, your posture, and your thoughts. That's it. So if you can change any of those three, that's a win. That's all you have to do. You want me to prove it to you? How does a person breathe when they have anxiety? They're hyperventilating. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't need to, right? So when you change your breath to the complete opposite, as hard as it may be, I know. I know this may be hard but you have a choice. You, you can choose to do it even if it looks totally clumsy. It's okay. Allow yourself to look clumsy. Well, it's fine. Change the breathing. <sighs> Complete opposite. Your posture. A person with anxiety. Oh my God. I don't know. Oh, oh. They're completely contracted. My muscles are tight. Everything is, and I can feel my stomach contracting as I'm doing this. The opposite of anxiety. Stand up tall, throw your arms up. What do I look like right now? I look like I can take over the world and you can do the same. I got this. Notice even my voice, everything changes. When I, when I do this, I'm like, I feel like Superman. So changing, I know it's fun. <laughs> it looks funny, but this works. It, this is the hack. This is that pattern interrupt that I was talking about, you know? And so breathing posture, and your thoughts. So you might say, oh my God, my nail broke. I was cleaning my whole house. And anyway, I get distracted easily. Um, your thoughts. You can choose to think that this coronavirus is a complete disaster. Oh my God, it's horrible. Oh my God, it's so bad. Oh my. What is that going to do for me? It is what it is. Everything just is. We get to decide whether it's good or bad. And we get to ask ourselves, okay, if it's not bad, what else could it be? What could be good about it, if anything? Notice how I'm changing my mind. Well, clearly, it has led to a lot more social connection. Dickens just shared with me, he has more time now than ever to implement certain systems, to do certain work. You know, what else could it be? And so when Dickens focuses on, oh my God, I get to now install different systems and I get to do more work, and he gets to focus on, I get to serve more people, I can be more useful. How does that feel? That feels amazing, right? So what else could it be? Everything just is. It's raining today. Oh my God, what a day. It sucks. I can't go outside. Really, what else could it be? Oh, what a beautiful day. I get to stay home or clean my house or whatever. So you can change your thoughts. All right? And again, I know this is very big picture and very simplified, but it really is that simple. As soon as you notice you're going into this, 
do that and watch what happens. The truth is, and this is really the, this is a, 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 a um, this is a tool that I actually do teach a lot of my clients. This is called the power pose. The power pose has been studied by Amy Cuddy. There's a 20 minute TED talk. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, Amy Cuddy, A-M-Y-C-U-D-D-Y, 20 minute TED talk that proves that when you stand like this and this is called the power pose and you remember a time in your life where you were so confident and calm and strong and powerful. Maybe you won a marathon. Maybe, maybe, you, um, maybe you gave uh, somebody a gift and it made you feel so good. Maybe you just hung up with your dad and you're like, oh my God, I feel so happy that I got to hear his voice. Whatever. Anytime you felt, um, you felt loving, you felt confident, you felt calm, you felt at peace, you stand like that. Remember that time. What did you see? Go back to that time. What is it that you heard? Were there people around? Were there sounds around? Maybe you were at a concert and you were like, oh my God, this is the best concert ever, right? And what did you feel? And notice those feelings bubbling up and stand like that for two minutes. And here's the study. This is so amazing. What happens as you stand like that, testosterone gets pushed and pumped into your body. And now what does that do for you? testosterone is the go-getter hormone, the hormone that is like, you got this, you can do, it's the male hormone that is like the, the action, right? The, I'm hungry, I need to eat, let me go out there and, 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 and shoot a deer or whatever, you know? So this is something that you can do first thing in the morning. And when you get out of bed, you go to the bathroom, you do the power pose for two minutes and you remember what it was like. What did you see, hear and feel? And you stand like that and you make yourself tall and proud, close your eyes. This will set you up for the day. Now you are actually priming your nervous system to, to become strong and calm and powerful. Does that make sense? So that's one. Now, I'm actually going to get into the actual tools that um, specifically what you can do besides the power pose. Okay. The first thing before you do any of these is you want to ask yourself your suds and I'm not talking about bath bubbles, but your subjective units of distress. All that means is on a scale of zero to 10, how intense is that feeling? You, you want to start, and this is key. The, as soon as you notice the anxiety, that's when you want to implement any of these tools, okay? The sooner you catch it, the better, because that's when you want to do that pattern interrupt, all right? Basically, for some people, they call themselves naturally anxious. If I were you, I wouldn't call myself that, because it reminds you, oh, anxiety, and then the body does anxiety. So call yourself something else, naturally calm, you know? So zero to 10 is basically zero. One is like slight nervousness. And then two goes into a little bit of worry. Three could be frustration. Four, you're starting to feel anxious. Five, a little bit more fearful and so on and so on until you get 10 is like a panic attack. You don't want to be doing, I mean, you can do this in panic attack mode, but try your best to catch it early on so that you can, because this is no different. Think about a wild horse or a dog, if the dog is like 10 feet away, is it going to be easy to control that dog? No, it's much easier to control that dog while he's on a leash kind of close to you so that you can get his attention any which way. Again, I say this lovingly, I'm, a, I'm an animal lover and I love to relate to the um, concept of training an animal. And if you have an animal, you know exactly what I mean. And training an animal is no different than giving um, interrupting the old pattern, giving clear commands, uh-uh-uh, sit with a very confident, calm, commanding voice. And that is what you're doing with yourself. You're redirecting your mind, uh-uh, no more, stop. This is where it's at now. Now we're going to practice breathing. That's right, for a whole minute. Too much? 30 seconds. So as you're doing this, give yourself a break, you know, realize you're human, even microdosing, this will work wonders. Okay. So check in zero to 10. What is that number? Write it down. 
Now, the first thing you can do, and this looks funny, but this is super effective. This comes from Chinese medicine. It comes from acupuncture. Start tapping the top of your head. Do this about 50 times, which takes about a minute. And that is, that is a pattern interrupt that works amazingly. After about a minute, come back and ask yourself, okay, what is the number, number now? Hopefully it went from a five to a four. You wanna bring it down to a three, keep tapping. As you're tapping, tell yourself, I am calm. I'm peaceful, I am safe right now. Everything is okay right now. Even if you don't believe it yet, you must, the mind must tell what I call the subconscious mind, what do you want instead? So you don't want to be, I don't want to be, I don't want to be so anxious. Oh, I just want to feel that way. I just don't want to notice. I keep telling, I keep focusing my mind to what I don't want. Focus it to what you do want. Redirect your mind. It's just like telling the dog. You're not telling to the dog, don't do that. No, 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 not that. Not. You're saying to the dog, sit. Simple, sit, come. Okay, so that's one. Number two, this is a little bit, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, a little longer tapping sequence, but it seems to be a favorite am among many. You're going to take your fingers like that and you're going to tap your forehead about six to 10 times. You don't have to count, just kind of calculate. Give yourself some energy. Then you're going to go to your temple again about six to 10 times right here, and then right on your cheekbone. These, all, these are all acupressure, acupuncture points. Then you're gonna come to your collarbone. Again, you don't have to be so perfect, but not exactly in the middle, but right underneath your collarbone, about six to 10 times. And then take a deep breath and breathe out and hold your wrist. And again, as you're breathing here, hold it, Tell yourself calm, peaceful, resourceful. I got this. This is going to be easy. And then start again. So first you want to do zero to 10. Where am I feeling right now? And work until you get to zero. Okay. Don't settle for anything but zero. It might take you a minute. It might take you three minutes. It might take you five minutes. Remember, this is like any other habit. The more you do this, the better you become. You know, and if you're going to tell me, oh, this isn't working, no kidding, it's not working. You can't expect it to, to do this one time and be like, it's not working. One push up, is that going to really give me like the fit, energized, strong body? No. You want to continue practicing these. Okay. As soon as you feel it, start practicing. One thing I want to mention that's super important, which takes me to the next, it's extremely important. This might sound super simple and super silly, but please don't underestimate water. Staying hydrated is going to make these techniques a thousand times more effective. I'm not kidding. A thousand times more effective. Water is that magical and that powerful. I'm not going to get into signs of it, Google it, figure it out, but water, stay hydrated and these techniques are going to work even more powerfully for you okay so here's my next so one more time the tapping points um forehead temple cheekbone um collarbone and you can even tap your wrist or you can hold it okay the next technique you're going to grab a water bottle or your phone and you're gonna hold it in front of your body and just pass it. Be careful not to hit somebody. Just pass it just like that. And this is actually something that doesn't look so weird. Even if you were walking down the street, you can just pass your phone back and forth and pretend like you do an exercise. This is amazing. You do this for a minute and you will notice that, and this actually works because you're activating the left and right hemisphere together. And this leads to brain confusion, mind confusion, which is great, which is just another interruption for your mind, okay, for your body. So just pass it back and forth for about a minute and notice what happens. Remember to always check in with the zero, zero to 10 scale and bring yourself down to a zero. So work it until, until you can. Um, and lastly, I just want to give you two other ones. Um, where am I? Holding your thumb. Okay, you want to squeeze your thumb. The, your thumb is, this comes from Japanese medicine. 
your thumb is actually linked to your nervous system and to your stomach. So when you hold your thumb, you're gonna to start to notice a pulsating in the hand that is holding your thumb. As soon as you notice the pulsating, that means it's working. That's it, okay? So hold, and I'm already feeling it now after 10 seconds, as soon as you notice the pulsating, that means it's working. So where are you now? Four, good, do it again. Breathing, yes, the most important thing, breathing. Any of these techniques, remember to breathe the opposite of anxiety. Inhale for four counts. I'm pursing my lips because that makes the exhale longer, deeper, and more effective. So inhale through your nose for four. Exhale for about six. You don't have to be so perfect spot on, you know, but just allow yourself to take longer, deeper breaths. And you'll notice the parasympathetic nervous system has to, keep, has to kick in. It just has to because the breath dictates sympathetic to parasympathetic, okay? So as soon as you breathe and just the breath alone can, can work wonders without any, any of these tools. So this is for worry. This is for fear. If, if you really are feeling freak out mode, you can do the, 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 the pointer finger, okay? Hold it here. Or you can do both together if you're not sure which one it is. Again, give it some energy. Give it a good squeeze. Not to the point where you're breaking your fingers, but you want to give it a good squeeze. And notice the pulsating, boom, that means it's working. So those are some really super simple techniques you can do anytime, any place. Uh, power pose, right? Uh, tapping just on top of your head, the five-step tapping, uh, the bilateral stimulation, and just breathing in itself. So just those couple of things are absolutely effective in helping you just bringing those numbers down. Okay. Um, what else? And stay hydrated. The other very basic but again, so effective. The least I want you to do is exercise every day. If you have never exercised or if you're not a consistent exerciser, start with five minutes, anything. There's so much free online, whether it's yoga, qigong, uh, uh, body weight exercises, walking, anything is acceptable. Cleaning the house, that's exercise. Believe me, it's, it's quite strenuous. Anything that allows you to move your large muscle groups, once again, why is this working? Because you're getting into your parasympathetic nervous system. Drinking lots of water. And I'm talking about 8 to 12 of these specifically. Okay? Fresh air. Non-negotiable. Nature is providing us with everything we need. Spend time in fresh air. Sleep. At least 8 hours. Especially during stressful times, we need more sleep. Uh, nutrition. Basics, more fruits, more vegetables if you can, good proteins, nuts, eggs, lots of fruits and vegetables. Did I mention that? I know this is so basic, but believe me, extremely, extremely effective. And meditate if you can. There's a free app that is, oh, never mind, I'm checking my text messages, um, that is called, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, where is it? Okay, I'm going to try to find it. Okay, so do you see my screen? And the second row up, you're going to notice a white um, circle with a something inside. <laughs> Basically, it's called Insight Timer. So when you can't sleep in the middle of the night, when you wake up, use this, this app, free meditations. They're phenomenal, really good quality. And, um, and, teach yourself to, I can certainly teach you how to meditate, but just again, just allow yourself to sit for three minutes, one minute, five minutes and breathe. Listen to any of these meditations. They're really phenomenal because now is the time for us to train to get to parasympathetic nervous system as often during the day as possible. If you just breathe for one minute, you have won the day. That's one minute is good enough and then do it more and more as, as often as you can. And here is, here is lastly what I, would what I would like to share with you. We're gonna get through this, for sure. Somehow or another, we're gonna, we're gonna get through this, and yes, there's a lot of change ahead. 
good or bad, is irrelevant. It's how we look at it, right? Now, once we get to the other side of this, what's going to be left is people and problems. And this is, this is a phenomenal opportunity for us to discover while we're here every single day, what are the solutions that are, are going to be needed? What are the opportunities that are going to present themselves? And how can I be most useful right now? And when you focus on not just you, but everybody else and how we all can serve our people, serve the planet and look at, okay, what is the problem today? How can I make myself useful? That is another phenomenal way for you to get out of that. Okay, what can I do for everybody else? Because chances are there are so many people out there that are, that are off so much worse. And what can we do to help them today? All right. So questions any questions you can unmute yourself now we have another eight minutes and um feel free to share i'm gonna stop stop my screen stop share okay any questions anybody chat okay what's your feeling on staying hydrated and good nutrition from iphone when it comes to anxiety by the way ah cool cool yeah hydration yeah, non-negotiable. Not, water, listen, remember, what is not contaminated? Our water, our food supply, our fresh air. Remember, you know, that's what a gift, what a blessing. We have to remember, what do we have? Not what don't we have? Yes, please, please, please stay hydrated. Extremely important. So simple to do. And I don't have time for excuses. Oh, how am I going to be my mess up? Come on. You know, no, this is no more kindergarten stuff. If you don't know how to stay hydrated all day long, okay, I'm going to give you one little hack. Get eight rubber bands, seriously. And here we go. Eight rubber bands, okay? This is six, seven, whatever it is. Every time you drink one of these, I know I'm getting very, uh, <laughs> I'm getting very upset. Every time you drink one of these, you take one rubber band from one wrist to the other. Yes, I had one bottle of water, okay? Next time you drink another bottle of water, boom, do that again. Yes, I drank two bottles of water, okay? Um, I love to have fun with this. Um, thank you, Susan, I need to jump on. Okay, perfect, hi, Linda. Uh, Christine, yes, thank you, I appreciate that, exactly. Um, oh, the name of the app is Insight Timer, as in insightful, yes, Insight Timer. Christine, that's right, um, good. Anybody else, any questions? So remember, this is recorded. I, I have the ability to share this with you so that when you want, want to watch it again, you can. Um, I know I, I gave you a lot of information, but, um, and I hope it was useful to you. So any other questions? Nobody? Just remember to unmute yourself if you have questions, okay? Anybody, anybody, anybody. So this is a time for training. Okay, we can all train ourselves to not stay in anxiety. When you experience anxiety, just really appreciate it because that just means your body works perfectly, magically well. Any questions? I think you cover a lot of great points. You know, um, a lot of stuff you mentioned, you know, I never really pay attention about the anxiety part. So that's pretty, pretty amazing how you you cover it up. You know, um, these little signs that you you're not paying attention. You don't know what it means. You know, in your mind, so you think you're seeing a doctor or someone else. You know, you, you're going all the wrong way about it. So it's very. I thought it was very well educated. You know, um, little pinpoint that the average person is not paying attention about, you know, mm. the signs of anxiety when you have it. Because if you don't know, you don't know. You know what I mean? So um, that was pretty, pretty fascinating for me. You know? So it's pretty cool. Thank you, Dickens. Uh, lastly, that just reminds me of another point that, you know, again, when we think about our leaders, whatever you want to call them, politicians, people who really need to make major decisions for the country right now, you know, we may look at them and judge and blame and, and be angry at them. Remember, 
um, look at them from a, from a, whether you agree with them or not, whether they're doing a good job, the, I'm not saying any of that. It's, it's up to the individual to decide for yourself whether you agree with them or not. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that they are fathers, they are mothers, they are people, they are brothers, they have children, they, uh, they're humans, they're doing the best they can with what they have. And just like I shared with you earlier, you know, you might do this technique for the first time and, and look clumsy or feel clumsy. Well, guess what? These politicians, leaders, whatever they are, they might feel the same because they've never had to deal with this before. So if we can look at them from a place of empathy and be like, man, what is their day like? The whole world is looking at them, making fun of them, judging them, blaming them. You know, can we look at it from empathy? Like, whoa, I wonder what their day is like. And then give yourself that empathy also and be like, man, this is a tall order. There's, there's a lot at stake here. This, there is a lot to handle. Give yourself that, you know, uh, that love that like right now, I don't need judge and blame and criticism. I need love. I need compassion. I need empathy. And that raises your vibrational energy. That gets you out of anxiety. It gets you back into your heart and you want to be there right now. Yeah. All right. That was pretty cool. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate you being here. And uh, if you want this, lastly, I want to share with you. Um, if you have one more question. Somebody yes. Yes question uh how can we help to interrupt a child going through this in their moment of severe right so the thing is during panic especially at at the peak of it it's very difficult to interfere because remember again if we looked at at this from a perspective of if this were an animal it's very very difficult to control somebody at the peak state that is not when you want to, you know, direct somebody. And Dickens, feel free to share your thoughts on this. Um, Dickens is a good friend of mine and also a coach just for everybody. Um, the, the, the best way to do that, share all this, is during calm. To model it, to teach it, to share it. That is really when you want to uh, direct your child and teach your child during times when, um, when they are going through severe panic, you really wanna let them kind of blow off that steam. And remember three things, breathing, posture, and, um, um, and thoughts. If you can interrupt that pattern any which way, whether it's with a clap or like, oh my God, look, oh, you gotta come to the window, check it, you know, and get them out of that state any, any which way that might be very useful in that moment. But very importantly, you want to match their state. This, I know this sounds counterintuitive. Let's say somebody's freaking out and you're like, oh, sweetheart, what's the matter? No, that's not gonna work. They're like, what the F? You want to match their state. What's the matter with you? Why are you so angry? Come over here. But you know, you want to get into that same state so that they can feel understood. And this goes deep into NLP but this works. So anything, get into that same anger state, into that same panic state, into that same fear state, so you can match their energy. And now you're vibrating at the same level. And then give, your, give, give yourself everything you can to bring them back to your state, which is calm and peace. Dickens, anything you want to share about that? Yeah, that's, that's really a great point, you know, to match the, um the other person's states when it, when they're behaving this way, especially when it comes to kids, like techniques works great with them because they look at you like, all right, why is he doing the same thing I'm doing? So you automatically yeah. change the states, you know, by doing yeah. that. It's a great technique to apply with kids, even with adults, you know, because they look at you like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> so like, are you making fun of me? But you're really not making fun of me. You just try to break the states. That exactly. You know, so... Um, and great point. If, if, if I think the main important thing that you cover is the signs of anxiety, because most people don't know, they're not aware of them. They see their body going through some stuff, their thinking is changing, but because they're not aware what it is that they're going through, so they have no idea if it's called anxiety. So I think that part, educating your kid, um, knowing, educating yourself about that is important. So that when you see the sign, you can use those three steps that you mentioned, you know, breathing, posture, and your thoughts by, you know, uh, mimicking the kid, if it's a kid behaving this way, you know, so you change the behavior 
by notice that. But if you don't know the signs, then there's a problem. So it's good. I, I thought that was very brilliant to share the, the, the signs of panic that the body goes through when you go into anxiety. So once you know that, then you can prevent it. You can use those steps to really help yourself and your kids. Is the same go? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Does the same go for adults? Do you yep. want to get into that same um, same level? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Dickens, <clears throat> I love how you put it in a nutshell. You um, get into the state to break the state. Exactly. It's right. like it's such a paradox, and it yeah. and it works. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it works. Um, so this is all about, this again goes into NLP, this is all about rapport. Absolutely. Basically, people like people who are like them. Yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. when you understand that, that's secret sauce. That's magical. Yeah. You know? So, so lastly, I, yesterday, I put together a mini course that has 10 techniques of everything that I share with you plus, right? Um, it's a, let me share it with you. It's a course that, um, Christine is actually doing it right now. Uh, can you see this? Wait, let me. So it's, I have videos that are two to five minutes long, breathing, okay, tapping, yeah. number one, five step tapping, Dickens, I shared it with you. Yeah. And so these are literally one to five minute techniques, much more than what I covered today that I am happy to share with you. Um, yeah, very, you can do this probably in less than 30 minutes. And this, the value of this is $300. And I'm sharing this with you for 25 if you're interested. And the good news is you can have this, share it with anybody you want. You know, it's, it's a one-time investment. If you want, let me know, email me, text me, call me, whatever. And I'm happy to give this to you because it's really, um, remember, we are now in training mode. So if you can teach yourself these techniques, they're so easy to, to use, um, then you win. You win and you're going to come out of this more powerful, more strong than ever before. So thank you very much. And I'm going to get on the phone with Jesse now. Thank you, Christine and Dickens. And awesome. Jesse, you're not going to talk. And iPhone, uh, Dan, right? Yeah. Dan the man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. Um, thanks so much. And, you know, listen, I'm always here for you. Any other questions, email me. And um, I don't think there are any more questions. Christine, that was a great question. Thank you for that. Awesome, Thank awesome. Thank you. You've been great. Good, good, good. Good um, luck, everybody. Good luck, <laughs> everyone. Well, you'll stay in touch, Susan, okay? Yes, absolutely. So thanks again. Nice Be safe. Guys. Wash Bye. your hands. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Bye. Thank you.